having established in Halacha 10 a distinction between the mitzvah of lighting the menorah in the Beit HaMikdash to the offering of the Mincha, in which for the Mincha, whatever the grading of the olive oil is, it may be used for that component of the Korban. The Rambam in Halacha 11 asks rhetorically, in light of the fact that all levels of the olive oil are valid, are acceptable for the Menachot, why do we need to differentiate between the different qualities of Shemen Zayit olive oil? And he answers his question, to establish a grading system ranging from the top quality, middle range quality, and the lowest quality of olive oil, so that one who wishes to gain merit for himself, subjugate his Yetzahara, the Yarchiv Yado, amplify his generosity, should bring his sacrifice from the most desirable and superior type of the item he is bringing. So what we have here is, at one extreme, the letter of the law, for which if he wishes to, he may bring olive oil that is of inferior quality, but preferably he should use oil of a higher quality, superior quality oil for the Menachot. In the words of the Rambam, the Yavi Karbano, he should optimally select and offer his offering min hayafer v'hamushubach b'yoter shebe'oto hamin the best quality from within the species sheyava mimenu that is the item that should be selected in support of the Rambam's position he quotes a pasuk from Vayikra 3.16 v'chein hu omer kol cheilev lahashem that only the choicest should be what is offered to God and in the very same halacha. The Rambam makes reference to the incident recorded in Bereshit 4, that the Hevel Hevi Gamhu mi Bechorot Tsono Umichla Behem, that Hevel in, with his offering brought the firstborn, the choicest of his flocks, and because it was the choicest, Vayisha Hashem El Hevel Vel Minchato, God turned to, God accepted Hevel and his Mincha and his offering. And with this, the Rambam extrapolates to other situations. That in all matters relating to God, that offering must be from the best, from the choicest, from the most appropriate. And he goes on to cite a number of examples. First, in Bana Beit Tfilah, that if one wishes to build a Bet Knesset, either individually or on behalf of the community, Yihyeh Na'er, Mi Beit Yeshivato, that Beit Tfilah needs to be more beautiful, more attractive than his own personal dwelling. If he feeds a hungry person, he should feed him from the best and most tasty foods of his table. If he clothes one who is naked, he should clothe him with the attractive garments. And if he consecrates something, he should consecrate the best of his possession. This is, according to the Rambam, the ideal. This point is amplified in footnote number 31, that certain offerings may be brought from the flocks, and the definition of flocks is an animal that can either be a sheep or a goat, and even though comparatively the Gemara in Pesachim suggests that the sheep, on account of its aliyah, has a higher value and is more preferable than the goat. Nevertheless, there's no obligation to reject the goat in favor of the sheep. There is no obligation to reject one species over another. The only condition is whichever of the species that is selected, it must be the choicest of that species. And this is drawn from the contrast between the offerings of Cain and Hevel. Flax was a superior species relative to the sheep, but the flax that Cain brought was Min Hagarua, the lowest quality flax, whereas the offering of Hevel was from the choicest from within the flocks, resulting in the acceptance of Hevel's offering and the rejection of Cain's.